to everything in life, there's a time and a season. But before I start this lesson over, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, your name, Yahweh. In the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with comforts and guides us, especially during these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity, and peace and salutations to the elect. But like I said, uh, for everything in life, there's a time and a season, according to the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. That's why even when Yahweh shot stepped foot on the scene, he stated that he he come to do the will of the one who sent him, and that was the heaven the Heavenly Father. And ultimately, everything that we do in life is according to the will of the Heavenly Father. From the time that you wake up, from the time that you go to sleep, everything was already written. But first, which I'm going to grab is Ecclesiastes, and I'm going to start at chapter 3 and verse 1. It reads, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. And we understand that coming into this truth, we find out, you know, certain things like the true name of the Heavenly Father, which does matter, which is Yahweh. There's no other name along with the, the name of the Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Yahweh, etc., his name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh Shah. But like it stated that a time to um it said a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. And we understand that this world, more specifically America, which is spiritual Egypt, Babylon the Great, the virgin daughter of Babylon, etc., who's being ran by the wicked, which the wicked that the Bible speaks of is the so-called white man. And him being in rulership, like the scriptures say, evils was multiplied in the earth. I believe that's in First Maccabees. So they plant wickedness, they sow wickedness, and ultimately, like the scriptures say, you reap what you sow. But we know according to the prophecies that eventually... That's going to be rooted up. So I'm going to jump from there to Malachi chapter 4. And I'm going to start at the top. Because this is the um, judgment that's going to happen to America. And ultimately the whole beast system. The NATO and the EU. It reads. For behold the day cometh. That shall burn as an oven. And all the proud. Yeah. And all that do wickedly. Shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So wickedness is going to be completely rooted up out of the earth. There's not going to be nothing left. I'm going to continue on. None, no, no wickedness left. Because we know ultimately when Yahweh Shah returns after destroying this kingdom, he's going to establish our kingdom, the Israelite kingdom, join heirs with him of everlasting righteousness. With the heathen under subjection under the Israelites, which will be on earth, the kingdom of heaven. But I'm going to continue on. But unto you that fear my name, the true name, Jehovah Bashim Yahushah, shall the son of righteousness, which is Jehovah Shah, arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So everything is going to be, you know, back in its proper order. Like it is, like I said, in, in earth as it is in heaven. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. And the day I shall do this, said the Lord of hosts. But the point is, like I said, it says that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Saying that eventually when them nuclear missiles are shot over here, you know, from World War Three, that's going to happen according to scriptures. Ultimately, America is going to be a des desolate, like desert land. Only thing that's going to dwell here is like wild beasts, like creatures that can live in a desert area. But America is going to be completely destroyed. 
But I'm going to continue on in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 3. It reads, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. And we understand that as of right now, we should be in a house of mourning because we understand that we're in captivity. Like the scriptures say, um, surely oppression makes us a wise man mad. Actually, I'm going to jump over to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 2. It reads, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. And we understand that majority of our people, two thirds of our people, they want to be in the house of mirth. They want to party and have fun. But we understand that, like I said, this is not the time. We supposed to be praying and praying to the Lord that we receive our daily bread to get to the day because like the scriptures say, perilous times should come. All hell is about to break loose. That's why the scriptures say, um, and um Sirach of Ecclesiastes chapter five and verse seven, it says, Seek the Lord while he, um and put not off from day to day. But I'm gonna continue on and reads, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. And we can we can see even amongst the people that know that they're Israelites, they don't even like to hear the rebuke of the wise. Like it says, a sinful man will not be reproved. They bucking up against the men that taught them, specifically our elders and apostles, the great millstone, on down to the men that teach the same, the likewise doctrine. They buck up against them like they didn't learn from these men. They they have no respect, rebellious children. But I'm going to continue on. I'm going to jump down to verse 7. It reads, Surely oppression make of a wise man mad, and the gift destroy of the heart. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. And we understand that these devils are proud, and they feel like, like I said, when I say the devil, I'm talking about the so-called white man who's in rulership. They are proud. But we understand that the hopeful elect that's out here doing his work and patiently waiting for our Lord Yahweh shot to return with a patient in spirit. Patient means to suffer. But I'm gonna continue on back in um chapter three. It reads a um a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. And like it says in um First Corinthians. Because we understand, like I said, that's why the scriptures say that we got to put our, I mean, but for the most part, you can tell based on the scripture, we got to put our emotions to the side because ultimately we know that majority of our people are not going to make it. But I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 28. It reads, but it, it, it says, um, I'm going to start at verse 29, Apostle Paul speaking, but this I say, brethren, that the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had not, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world is not abusing this world, abusing it for the fashions of this world passeth away. And we understand that, like I said, eventually America spiritually called Egypt, Sodom, and Gomorrah is going to be destroyed along with all of the elements in it. So we ultimately know that this is not the time to be trying to be prosperous in this kingdom. Like I said, we just supposed to be praying to receive our daily bread because ultimately we don't know who's the chosen until that day. Like it says in um second Edra 16 and I believe the 73rd verse. But I'm going to go from there to um 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And verse 26, it reads, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 
for he that he had put all things under his feet, but when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. So eventually, like I said, Yahweh Shah is going to destroy this kingdom and establish our kingdom. And like I said, the last enemy that will be defeated is death. And like I said, that's our biggest enemy. And when I say I, I'm talking about the Israelites, which ultimately they elected a nation of Israel because two-thirds of our people don't look at these devils as our enemy, along with the rest of the heathen that are our enemy. But our biggest enemy, like I said, is the so-called white man who forefathers Esau Edom. They have a perpetual hatred for us, the Israelites, which today the Israelites consist of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that look like heathen but are not heathen because their father's seed line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I got the list of the chart in um, my bio. But like I said, the last enemy that should be defeated is death. And what does it say in Habakkuk chapter um, 2 and verse 5? It said, Yet also he transgressed by wine. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. And that's the so-called white man. Just like from the beginning when, I mean, during the times of when he, um, Cristobal Colon so-called discovered America. When our people, the Lord's, when our um, brethren, the Lord's people, the Native American Indians were over here in America already. And he, so he came over here with Hebrew interpreters and ultimately took advantage of our people. Like I said, the Lord didn't forget none of that stuff, but... Like I said, the, the elect, the Lord has brought the, the brought the remembrance unto the elect, especially the men. You know that He put the Spirit on to teach this word, and like we know, as a, like the scriptures say, measure the time diligently, and a, and it show and the scriptures say that the Lord is going to put the Spirit on all flesh, so it's, the men are going to receive. You know, the ones that have had the Spirit on to teach are going to receive this truth and be able to feed. The rest of the flock and only the elect of the nation of Israel is going to receive it. Like Yahweh Shah said, his sheep hear his voice. But I'm going to continue on. It reads, a time to, verse 6, a time to, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 6, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rent and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. And as we know, like it says in Amos, let me get it. It says, a time, what does it say? A time to rent, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. And as of right now, the men of the Lord out there on the highways and the byways pushing this word, speaking the words of Yahweh Shem Yahushua. But eventually, the Lord is going to shut the mouths of the prophets. And what it says in, um, let me see, Amos. And during that time, the people that didn't receive this truth, just like the days of Noah, when the flood came, they're going to be caught out there in the flood. Amos chapter 8 and verse 11, it reads, Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, not a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north, even to the east, that shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. So eventually, like I said, once the Lord shut the mouths of the, of the prophets, the people that was turning and putting off from day to day, not seeking the Lord. While he may be found, eventually they're going to be caught out of there and they're going to be looking for the true men of the Lord, which, like I said, from our elders and apostles, the great millstone on down to the men that teach the same likewise doctrine have been out of the true men of the Lord through the spirit, I believe. But I'm going um, to grab one more. Before, because like I said, the whole purpose of this lesson is to say that everything is, it's a time and a season for everything. Everything is in the will of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. But 
I'm going to go to Emma Johnson. I was talking about the speaking. It. Amos chapter 5 verse 13. It reads, therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time for it is an evil time. So yeah, like I said, it will behoove you to seek the Lord and, and repent. And like the men of the Lord been t preaching, talking about these prophecies that's going to come to pass, telling and warning our people, especially about, you know, the MOTB written in Revelation 13 and 16, that RFID micro chip that these devils are going to try to um, deceive everyone in the world to take. But ultimately, we understand the elect is going to have a spirit on them to not to do so. And the ones that then take heed are eventually going to be deceived and be ignorant of Satan's devices. So that's why we're telling our people to repent, seek the Lord before all hell breaks loose. But like I said, there's a time and a season for everything. But that's all I got. Shalom.